Welcome back to another video in our Working with Evernote series and today I woke up actually this morning and uh, saw on my iPad a security breach. Grab the copy of the image here. Apple ID sign-in requested. Your Apple ID is being used to sign into a device near Changchun Jilin or however that may be pronounced and I know I'm nowhere near there so I was very quick to hit do not allow and then change my passwords. It allowed me to recollect on a post that I saw on Reddit there yesterday, I think it was, and I see this fairly regularly. Uh, other devices randomly access my accessing account. This person posted here, have you been noticing other devices logged in onto my Evernote from other countries like Greece? I live in the United States. Had to log into my account to revoke access. Does anyone else have this issue? Well, if you jump on through to Reddit here. You'll see a few people that have responded and saying set a strong password and enable two-factor authentication. Another person replied to that message saying this, I don't have a str any strange activity on my account and that's like me. I've got a solid password set and uh, two-factor uh, authorization required. Uh, somebody else posts someone has your account credentials and uh, the original poster actually responded here. Do you have any other recommendations? I'm assuming two other app saving notes. I'm assuming they're thinking Evernote is weak and uh, needs to be replaced, but that's not the case whatsoever. What you need to do is set a strong password and enable two factor verification on your account. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually do a complete Evernote security review and we're going to just jump before we do that into a couple other websites and I'll link these below that let you check on your account general account information one of those is this website right here have I been pawned or PWN I call it pawned maybe you want to call it something different but anyway have I been pawned is what I'll call it. Check to see if you have an account that has been compromised in a data breach. So you can just plug in your email address right here, click the button and go, and it will tell you if there's been any security breaches on that email address. In this case, test at Gmail. Uh, I'm certainly not surprised. 272 breach site and found 670 or 607 pastes. Big red flag comes up. So if you plug in your email address there that you use on Evernote or whatever note-taking application you do use and you're getting into a big red flag like you see here, you'll want to do something about it. This goes through and tells you, well, there is some Bitcoin security and a Gmail dump, Dropbox had a release and, and so on where that test.gmail.com account was breached. Again, I'll post a link to this down below and plug in your email address just to see. If you get green down here, you're all good. If you get red, you're not so good. I'll just show you... Uh, let's see here what a test account does. Should come up green. Good news, not found. No breached accounts and no pastes. This isn't my Evernote address, by the way, but this is a... Uh, an email address that is valid except for the XYZ component here. But if you get green like this, you should be going, you should be all good. Another website that you may want to consider looking at is useapassphrase.com. When we get into talking about passwords, a simple word like COVID, for instance, approximate crack time 45 seconds. So you don't want to use a simple word like that. Again, sticking a number on the end, COVID-19, approximate crack time, four hours. You don't want to use a simple password like that. You want to use what they're suggesting here is a phrase. So we're just going to type in a simple phrase, and we're going to watch the approximate crack time. Just doing this simple phrase approximate crack time 375,000 centuries. Now, it's a common phrase, so I, I wouldn't be using that because I would 
you know, sure it's a phrase, it goes well beyond simple words that people use, but it is a popular phrase, so I would be coming up with something a little bit more unique. 93 years, you know, stuff like that. Or you can just randomize it, pick a four word passphrase, five word, 12 word, generate something new. Look at that, 2.7 million centuries. Now, I'm not sure if I could remember that, but I'm sure after typing it in a few times, it would be no problems at all. So anyway, that's maybe something you can use to generate a new password. Anyway, let's get over to Evernote here and do a security checkup. Uh, we're running this right now off of Evernote 10.4.3. Your version, if you're using version 10, will be very similar anyway. If you're using legacy, uh, you'll just have to go into the menu options there and have a look. What you're doing is going to Account Info. On version 10, we go to Tools and then Account Info. Click, and it's going to open up a web browser. If you need to log into Evernote still, go ahead and do that, otherwise you will see your account summary. For our security checkup, you can have a look through here. Just do a double check, make sure you are on your correct account. Jump down to Devices as a first getting started location here with our security checkup. What Devices does is let you review what devices exactly as it's saying are logged into Evernote at the moment or what's been recently logged into Evernote so here we can take a quick look last accessed November 23rd for me these all look correct an Android device my Windows X1 computer my phone my iPad mini and so on down the list into some older devices that maybe haven't been used on Evernote for a little while what you can do with those is actually go ahead and click revoke access if there's something in there that's not been used in a while or you no longer have that device. All it does is force a sign out of any of those devices and require proper login next time. So you can just click confirm and that device gets removed from an active device. Of course if you see something in this list that's not your device be sure to immediately revoke access and then go and change your password immediately. That's our first step. Next step, we are going to jump down to the security section right down here, and we're going to actually review backwards through this list to make sure you've got no security leaks. Connected services, we'll just click on that. We'll have a look that makes sure everything in here is the way it's supposed to be I don't do any sign-ins with Apple so that's not set up there I do use Google I could disconnect if I wanted to but it's a secure way of getting into Evernote so I'm leaving that alone I don't have this Wall Street Journal or Nikkei financial index uh, link set up so those are both disconnected they would let me connect if I wanted to nothing else shows up in here so we're all good for that that step Access history. Click. So access history is going to show us different applications and devices. Not unlike devices up here, but it's going to show us fairly similar results down here in access history. It's going to show us when, it's going to show us what, and it's going to show us where from. So we just want to look again for any abnormalities anything that's going on today with today's date on here where it's estimating from so I've got everything coming from Alberta Canada which is correct for me we will just scroll down the list there's nothing out of the ordinary in there so I'm not too worried we can go ahead and we can look down the list here as well Evernote Web Clipper worked today quite a few times uh, Evernote for Windows on my X1 laptop Android Evernote Web Evernote for iPhone, iPad, and so on, the scannable application. You'll see different things in here, different laptops, as you scroll through the list. If anything looks out of place, if you're normally sitting in Alberta, Canada, and all of a sudden you've got a pop-up that's saying, or a, a message in here that's saying an Android device accessed from Wuhan, China, you definitely want to change your password right away. 
Scrolling down, very similar to up above, these are different services that have accessed your account recently. So you want to make sure these services are all correct and remove access to any that aren't correct. In my case here, I've got several different systems that interact with my Evernote account. Filterize, you've seen me talk about in some other videos as IFTTT, if this then that, you've seen me use that as well. iOS shortcuts is in there, a variety of different things. Let's have a look. Again, anything out of the ordinary, change your password immediately. Continuing up the security chain, we're going to go to Applications next and click there. And again, just look for anything abnormal in the list. If you've got any devices that you do not use anymore, be sure you scroll down and you hit Revoke Access. Uh, there's nothing in here though that I want to revoke access. Evernote Clipper for Office 365. I actually don't use Office 365 anymore at this point in time anyway or for the account that this one would have been set up so I'll just show you here revoke all applications for Evernote Clipper for Office 365 confirm access for this device has successfully been revoked and you can just continue your audit through the list making sure you remove anything look for identifiers for what computers you're using remove those if you don't have that computer anymore other applications you can revoke access here. I use Canva Note, Note Shelf, Notion, Links, a uh, variety of things like that. So these all look good. Nothing again standing out to me that looks like a problem. If it did, password change and revoke access. Finally, continuing on and trying to finalize our security audit, we're going to go to Security Summary. It's going to ask you to log in again, verify your password. In this case, I'm using Google to log in, so it will ask me to verify through Google. If you're just using a password, you'll have to enter your password again. Just log in through Google right there, and you'll see your security summary, which is very basic here. Change your email address if you want, so just verify that that's correct password if you need to change your password if you've decided to use a complicated password phrase and you want to change it we'll just click change password enter your current password put in your new and confirm it and then hit update account status you can deactivate if you've been breached and you want to wipe everything go ahead and do that but you're not getting anything back so use caution and in this section here, you'll see I have two-step verification enabled. If you don't, what that will look like is I'm just jumping over to a demo account here. We'll go to a account info, security summary, re-enter our password to verify. And you will see email address, password, and two-step verification. It's not enabled there. Because I have it enabled, what we can do is manage settings. We can verify through two-step verification through an app on our phone, or we can choose to receive text messages. I prefer not to use the text messaging system because if I was out of the country and I don't have cell service, or even if I just don't have cell service, then I'm not going to get the text message timely, and that's going to pose a problem. You'll verify your phone number, backup phone number, and backup codes. Backup codes are very important to have just in case you can't get your app to work or your text messaging system is down. So you would just click view backup codes just like so. You'll get some different codes in here. Write those down, put them in a paper notebook, lock them in a safe, do whatever you need to do to keep them private because those will grant you access to Evernote in case none of the other systems work. Of course, if you wanted to, you could disable two-step verification if you needed to. It's uh, not recommended. I would strongly suggest if you needed to turn that off, you get it turned back on as soon as possible. If you've got a third-party application that needs a password to get in and can't bypass the two-step verification, you can actually generate an application password through this system right here, through application passwords.
So that is the basics of our security summary, our security checkup in Evernote. If you want to turn two-factor verification on, we'll just jump back to my demo account here. If you want to turn it on and you don't have it set right now, it's very simple. Again, security, security summary section, we are going to enable two-step verification. You'll get a couple of information screens here. Two-step verification adds an extra layer of protection. That's great. Continue. Important things to remember. You need a verification code via text message or the authorization app that you saw earlier or a backup code, which I also showed you earlier. If you are unable to provide a verification or backup code, you will lose access to your account. Continue. Verify your email address. We're just going to send that verification email address off. And when we get the code in, we are going to go ahead and type it right into there. Click Continue. Enter our phone number. And click Continue. Now I'll get a text message that says, here's a six-digit code. So we plug that in. Continue. Skip for the optional backup phone number. You can put that in if you want. And now here, Evernote is suggesting, and it's optional, get the Google authorization app. For iOS, you can continue. For Android, continue here. Blackberry, down here. You can download the app from the App Store, as it shows here. I use a different app. It's called Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. And it's very similar to the Google one. It just is a little bit nicer app, basically. It lets me sync across different devices where the Google one, if I get a new phone, it's a little bit more troublesome to set up. Anyway, continue with iOS in my case. Click, and all you do now is open that app you've downloaded onto your phone, click the plus button, and scan the barcode with your phone camera. You'll get a six-digit code that you go ahead and type into there, and then you hit continue. If the code matches, you are all set up for two-factor verification. I'm just going to hit cancel. I'm already set up with that app to use Evernote, so I don't want to go and mess anything up. But that is it. That is the basics of setting up two-factor verification with your Evernote account and doing a very basic security sweep, security verification or an audit, if you will, of your Evernote account. You might want to set yourself a reminder and do that every couple of weeks just to make sure everything looks good. Again, strongly recommended for two-step verification that will virtually eliminate any problems you've got with getting your Evernote account hacked. Of course, if you're plugging confidential information into Evernote, you are taking a risk. Evernote uses cloud-based storage, and although it's quite secure on its own, there is always a chance that something could happen and that information gets leaked out or otherwise hacked. Uh, personally, I do put a lot of faith into Evernote and their security. I'm also very conscious of using a unique password with my account on Evernote and that I have two-step verification enabled at all times. That's it. I hope you got something out of that episode. Be sure to stop what you're doing right now, do a quick security audit of your own account, and make the necessary changes if you need to. Thanks very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Evernote tips and tricks, and be sure to also click that like button down below.